Arrival and Preparations at Akiria the vast emptiness of space was abruptly broken as the shimmering lights of the FTL drives dimmed, revealing the massive expanse of the Eighth Fleet. Front and center, the flagship commanded by General Zorvan. The fleet had just entered the orbit of the mysterious fourth planet of Akiria, and as the engines powered down, an eerie silence permeated through the ranks. Sensors hummed and beeped, panels blinked, and operators on the flagship's command deck poured over data screens. After what felt like hours but was only mere minutes, the lead sensor operator announced, No immediate threats detected, General. The planet appears dormant. Zorvan nodded, his stern eyes focused on the planet below, the green and blue hues of Akiria, punctuated by the patches of decaying urban sprawls, intrigued him. Prepare two survey teams. I want to know what secrets those ruins hold, he ordered. Within moments, two planetary shuttles disengaged from the main fleet, taking flight towards Akiria's surface. They would explore contrasting regions of the planet, hoping to piece together a holistic understanding. As they entered the planet's atmosphere, the pilots could make out the remnants of once great cities. Towering structures, now dilapidated and overgrown, stood testament to a forgotten era. Back in orbit, Zorvan wasn't one to simply wait. Establish defense satellites around our perimeter, he commanded, and get the comm array online. I want a 360-degree view of this region of space. We're not getting blindsided. Teams rushed to action, deploying a series of state-of-the-art satellites that not only would provide a defense grid, but also extend their communication and detection range. Once fully functional, they would be able to monitor movements in nearby star systems. As the array was being set up, a familiar chime echoed through the command center, the Helians. On the main screen appeared Captain Draylon of the Helian battlecruiser, his face characterized by the typical sharp features of the Helians and their signature iridescent eyes. General Zorvan, Draylon greeted with a nod. We're a few hours out. No local threats detected and no DRAC drones either. We do have some odd readings several light years away, possibly DRAC, but we can't confirm. For now, this sector seems clear. Zorvan acknowledged. That's a relief. We're setting up our defenses here. I hope this quietness lasts. Draylon nodded. So do we, General. Switching his focus, General Zorvan quickly communicated to the shuttle team leaders. You have a limited window, a few hours at best to complete your survey. We have intel suggesting DRAC movement in the vicinity. Commander Iyana, standing next to Zorvan, leaned in. General. Your instincts about this planet and the Drac are proving right. There's more to Akiria than meets the eye. Zorvan's gaze turned steely. Then let's ensure we discover its secrets before the Drac do. Helian shadows. In the deep void of space, the inky blackness was near absolute. Yet within this canvas of darkness, two Helian ships, sleek and arrow-shaped, cruised silently. Their gleaming hulls, typically reflecting the stars, were now completely invisible thanks to their cutting-edge cloaking technology. They were specters, observing without the risk of observation. These Helian vessels had narrowly escaped the devastation at Alpha Point. As the Drac launched their surprise attack, the Helians had darted around the Drac behemoths and activated their FTL drives, coming close to getting hit but managing to evade long enough to escape. Their small jump took them far enough from the heat of battle to avoid immediate detection. After ensuring their immediate safety, they had engaged their stealth technology. There was a brief moment where they communicated with Helian Command to relay what had happened and get their orders. The directive had been clear. Shadow the five rebel cruisers that had left for the rendezvous with Federation one day before. Now, in the subsequent hours since Alpha Point's destruction, these Helian ships had been like silent guardians, tailing the rebel fleet from a distance, keeping tabs on them, all while making sure their own presence remained a secret. Inside the lead Helian vessel, Commander Salon and his second-in-command, Lieutenant Varick, stood before a shimmering holographic display. They were listening intently to the ongoing communication between the rebel leader and the Federation's Commander Vance. Their own motives for monitoring weren't entirely altruistic. Yes, the Helians had an alliance with the Federation, but alliances in these times of interstellar politics and warfare were as much about information gathering as they were about mutual defense. Varric, his iridescent eyes reflecting the glint of the hologram, turned to Salon. 
Commander, we're threading a fine line here. If the Federation discovers we've been secretly tailing their rebel allies, it may not bode well for our relations. Salon, his face a mask of stoic contemplation, replied, We follow orders, Lieutenant. Command sees a value in understanding the rebels' intentions fully. It's our duty to gather as much intel as possible. Varric sighed. It's just, we're allies with the Federation. What if they perceive our actions as deceitful, spying on their newly formed allies? That's bound to sow mistrust. Salon raised an eyebrow. You think we should reveal ourselves? Varric hesitated, then nodded. I do. We've seen the rebels in action. They sacrificed their base, their comrades, in Alpha Point for the greater good. They might be rugged and unpredictable, but they have shown honor. The commander looked at the holographic display, a visual feed of the rebel cruisers moving in formation. He then glanced at another screen showing their distance from the main Helian fleet, weighing their options. Finally, after a heavy pause, he said, I understand your concerns, Varric. We'll continue to observe for now. But if circumstances change, or if there's even a hint of discovery, we will immediately decloak and declare our intentions. For now, our primary directive is clear. Observe, analyze, and report back to command. Varric nodded, still looking uneasy. Very well, Commander. The vastness of space stretched before them, holding countless secrets and strategies. Both ships continued to silently glide in the shadows, watching, waiting, and deciding their next move in this complex interstellar chess game. Rendezvous in the Void the silent expanse of space stretched endlessly around the Federation fleet, interrupted only by the distant glimmers of stars and galaxies. At the forefront of the formation was the Argus, a behemoth of human engineering with its armored hull reflecting the distant starlight. On either side of it, providing coverage and support, were the Valiant and the Sentinel. Each ship was a testament to human resolve and resilience. Inside the command center of the Argus, Commander Vance stood tall, her eyes darting across the numerous monitors that displayed a myriad of information. Approaching the rendezvous point, Lieutenant Grisham announced, Sensors still clear of Drac presence. Before Vance could issue her next set of directives, the comms device chirped, signaling an incoming transmission. The screen displayed Lieutenant Lyra, her expression a complex mix of relief, fatigue, and determination. Beside her stood a figure with regal bearing, his eyes surveying the bridge of the Argus with keen interest. Commander Vance? Lyra began, her voice firm but holding an underlying note of gratitude. I'd like to introduce Prince Arlon, the leader of the rebel forces. Vance inclined her head in a gesture of respect. Prince Arlon? She acknowledged. I've heard of your efforts against the Drac. Prince Arlon's gaze was unwavering, yet his voice held warmth. Commander Vance, it's an honor to finally meet you. Your cruisers look very imposing. Vance nodded solemnly. We picked up the transmission from Alpha Point en route. It was a beacon for many, and its loss was felt deeply even among our ranks. Arlon responded. We've all suffered losses at the hands of the Drac. Alpha Point being the latest in a long line. Your condolences are appreciated. Vance looked up and said, What's our next course of action? Arlon took a deep breath, steeling himself. We rally at Omega Base. We've called upon every ship, every fighter loyal to our cause. Over 300 vessels of varying sizes and strengths have gathered, eager to strike back and reclaim what's rightfully ours. Vance, impressed by the numbers, raised an eyebrow. That's a significant fleet. Combined with our battlecruisers, we might just send the Drac back to where they came from. That's the hope. Arlon responded, determination shining in his eyes. We appreciate the Federation's support in these dire times. Once our fleets join forces at Omega Base, we'll plan our assault. The comms were filled with a momentary silence as the weight of their upcoming endeavor settled upon them. Vance finally broke the stillness. Then let's not waste any more time. We'll accompany you to Omega Base. Together, we stand the best chance. Arlen nodded in agreement. Very well. Set course for the Galarian Nebula. As the transmission ended, and the two fleets began their synchronized maneuver to set a path towards the nebula, a smaller rebel ship approached the Valiant. Aboard it, Prince Davin, Arlon's younger brother, along with his rebel entourage, observed the human battlecruisers with a mixture of awe and hope. They're magnificent, Davin whispered, his eyes wide as he took in the sheer size and intricate designs of the Federation fleet. 
A fellow rebel, Captain Tellen grinned. I've never seen anything like them. These human ships, the Drac won't know what hit them. Davin's expression hardened, and he nodded in agreement. Indeed. With these behemoths on our side, the Drac won't stand a chance. As the combined might of the Rebel and Federation fleets charted their course for Omega Base, there was a renewed sense of hope and determination. The upcoming battle would be fierce, but with unity and strategy, victory was within reach. Strategy in the Shadows In the vast expanse of space, two Helian vessels floated silently, indistinguishable from the emptiness around them. Their advanced stealth technology ensured they blended seamlessly into the cosmic void, a testament to Helian engineering prowess. Internally, too, the ships were technological wonders, built to minimize any emissions that could betray their presence. Inside the command center of the lead ship, Commander Salon and his second-in-command, Lieutenant Varick, were deep in discussion. The ambient lights of the console cast a gentle glow, reflecting off their iridescent eyes, which sparkled with determination and a touch of worry. Their whispered conversation filled the room. We've garnered a wealth of data, Salon began, his tone level. The rendezvous, their intentions for Omega Base, their combined might. This intelligence is invaluable for our leaders. Varric, ever the voice of reason, responded. But we tread on a delicate path, Commander. We may be allies with the Federation, but this lurking in the shadows, eavesdropping on their conversations, it feels wrong. Salon leaned in, palms flat on the holographic table displaying the movements of the Rebel Federation fleet. It's a complex universe, Varric. Yes, we stand with the Federation, but these Rebels? They're an enigma. We must discern their true intentions. Varric's eyebrows knitted in thought. From our observations, their goals seem aligned with the Federation's. Why the suspicion? Salon exhaled slowly. The cosmic dance is intricate. The Rebels and Federation, together against the Drac, could disrupt the balance of power in our quadrant. But the Federation has always been our staunch ally, Varric reasoned. Shouldn't we trust them? Salon met his gaze firmly. We do. But that doesn't mean we overlook potential threats. Politics are fickle. Alliances can crumble overnight. The room lapsed into contemplative silence. Varric finally spoke. So your suggestion is we continue this clandestine observation? For now, yes, Salon replied. If we notice even a hint of them deviating from their plans or acting against our interests, then we intervene. Varric looked contemplative. And if their journey to Omega Base proves genuine, if they rally against the Drac with no hidden intentions? Salon's expression softened. Then, as allies, we stand beside them. Varric sighed. This shadow game we're playing, it's treacherous. Being discovered could spell disaster for our relations. Salon nodded in agreement. It's a gamble. But it's for our people's greater good. The commander's discussion continued, oscillating between strategic assessments and moral quandaries. Outside, the combined might of the Rebel and Federation fleet progressed, their path clear, their intentions open to each other. Yet in their wake, the twin Helian vessels persisted, silent and unseen. Their roles, for now, were as observers, watching and waiting. The stakes of their decision to either remain unseen or step into the light cast a long shadow on the challenges and alliances of the days to come. The universe, it seemed, held its breath, 